Hello and welcome to another episode of the Viva Bastardo show brought to you by the Haggerty Podcast Network. Today we have Larry Webster from Haggerty. The Haggerty overlords themselves are here to talk about the Haggerty bull market list, which is basically all the cars they think are going to appreciate over the next uh, few years. Larry tells me they've had a 92% success rate, so I feel like you just buy all of them and put them in a barn somewhere. Uh, anyway, it's a fantastic and insightful chat, so let's get into it. This podcast is brought to you by AeroVault. AeroVault was designed by Pete Brock, who just so happens to be the legendary designer of the Corvette Stingray and the Shelby Daytona Coupe. It's a car trailer that's made of aluminum and composite materials, incredibly efficient, incredibly aerodynamic. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing to look at also, as it turns out. Find out more at aerovault.com or call them at Henderson, Nevada at 702-843-5320 and tell them Haggerty sent you. I've become like my manly levels of, I feel I'm reaching, I'm close to Chuck Norris levels of manliness. Yeah, yeah, you're like, I need more of this problem solving in my life. This is amazing. But only if it involves like a, an application of oil <laughs> and then it's fixed and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> then yeah, I'm, yeah. Then, okay. it's, then it's all me. See, what so, you do is like, like I, I had a buddy of mine's a retired mechanic and he just comes over and I pay him and then I work next to him and I'm like, yeah, like I adjusted those carburetors. I had nothing to do with it, but I just watched him. <laughs> That's amazing, though. I would love to have some geezer come over and I could just be his, yeah, his apprentice, his minion, so I could yeah. watch what's happening. And I've, I'd, I would like that a lot. That's what I do. It's I'm, all mysterious to me. It is. And I bought a car from him. And um, what did you get? It was, well, it was a couple of years ago. I bought a 914 with a 2.4 that he wanted to unload. He had built. And I said, look, I think the price is high, but I'll pay it. It needed work. I said, if you come over to help me fix it. He's like, OK. Uh, and that's how okay. it started. It was been fantastic. That's genius. Yeah, no one ever offers me that deal. Phil, if you come over. <laughs> right, I don't get that deal in reverse. Well, people, I mean, you know, someone I could offer, like, I'll come over and I'll sit there in a jumpsuit and regale you with stories of boarding school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. All kinds of shenanigans happen in boarding school, Phil. That's Let's what I'm it. saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying, man. I mean, I'm always telling my kid about my boarding school antics. Right? You guys yeah. were naughty. Yeah, there was... It was, <laughs> yeah, she's, she, and then she tells her friends, she goes, dad, tell the story about the, tell that story about the time you made that, you peed into a, a vodka bottle, a gin bottle, and you had that guy drink it and he didn't know his pee. And I'm like, no, 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 that wasn't me. She was asking me that this morning. She <laughs> I don't like, know what you're talking about. Yeah, that, <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> so we're here, I feel, uh, first of all, a couple of things. I think we're here, you are about to announce a massive, um, uh, Viva Bastardo pay rise for me. Is that right? It's like a well, 10 grand so, an episode. I think that's, is that what we were talking about? <laughs> I mean, you just got to, you got to write it down on a piece of paper and you slide it <laughs> oh, across the table. I've always and wanted I'm going to make that. it happen for you. I've always wanted to slide the piece of paper across the table, but I feel like if I did that, you would just slide the piece of paper back to me with that. You don't know that. We haven't tried it. <laughs> and then number two is, um, we're here to talk about the, the bull market, the Haggerty yes, bull market. And coincidentally, as I understand, every single car I own is top 10 on the bull market. Is that right? Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, like the first thing is we, we look at you. What does he own? What? This dude's always ahead of the curve. Here we go. This made it, you made it so easy this year, Phil. I can't thank you enough. I like to help out, man. I like to help out. <laughs> I'm sure Guara is right up there. The De Tomaso Guara is very I, I, is sizzling. <laughs> I think that was uh, uh, the XJ220 and your whatever that Guara, how you ever say that. Like that is That's such an oddball pick. I think you're onto something with that thing because it's so with, cool looking. It's really, it's beautiful. It's not ugly. I will tell you, man, because um, I, I, I've i never, I mean, the Tommaso have not been known for their driving. Uh, Wait, know, like, could you just explain, just tell us, tell me what exactly is that car? What year is it? How did this thing <laughs> oh, germinate? I mean, I will actually say, man, this it's actually, the more you get into it, the more interesting it becomes. Oh. So, well, <laughs> which is unusual for me. More Usually, the more I get into things, the more boring I become. Mm. So, the so De Tomaso Guara was the last car De Tomaso made in his, with his company in 90, in the late, in the mid-90s. Uh, Argentinian, but, right? Yeah, Argentinian. He made the, De, he's mostly known for the De Tomaso Pantera, 
Uh, mm -hmm. The De Tomaso Mangusta, which was a Giugiaro design, which is really beautiful, terrible, terrible car to drive. Almost beautiful one. car. Yeah, I mean, it's the it's got the most insane driving position where your head's touching the glass, the front <laughs> glass, <laughs> just good for you know, good for front end front end collision. Um, yeah, and then he did this car. So basically, what he did was he Maserati had a Barchetta series they were going to they produced that was going to be for racing, and he took that chassis. So it's a honeycomb aluminium or aluminum chassis, uh, composite body panels, so carbon Kevlar body panels, um, BMW rear mounted, mid mounted BMW V8. Um, so it weighs 2,600 pounds and it's got about 280. Uh, um, what year? 95. And then it's got inboard Formula One suspension designed by Williams. So it's this it's actually a total race car and it's really amazing to drive which is utterly shocking because normally they're not but it's so ah oh, it's just it's you said 95 yeah 95 like that and was the height of my car and driver years i was just in there i was obsessed with cars and i'm just so mad at myself i had no idea what this thing i didn't even know it existed until you brought it up well like, it, how did it, how did i miss it well because they made so few man it kind of came and went they made i think 50 ish of which uh, 18 had a BMW engine. Then they went with a Ford block, which added another three or 400 pounds to the car. Then they have Barquetta versions and uh, that's it. So there's, I think, I think maybe 30 coupes and 18 Barquetta. Um, but it's, uh, the only, look, the only reason I ended up buying that car was because um, my friend Tom Hale of Morton Street Partners called me, he sent me some pictures. I was like, uh, and I thought, oh, that's a bit odd. And then I went to see it it's and, cool. it's, and it's really, but in person, it's fantastic because it's really wide and yeah. quite short. It's almost short. Stratos, it's like, it's kind of like my, my, it's almost like driving a Stratos, but better. It's super cool looking. I can't you believe have to, I didn't know you, about it. You have to see it. You have to come and drive it, man, when you're in the city. Next time you're here. And which and motor it. do you have? The BMW. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I should have known. And that's the four, four liter. Now you've gone beyond my mechanical yeah. knowledge, man. Those are, I, know, I mean. I think it's internal combustion. <laughs> <laughs> I put gas in the gas tank. <laughs> oh, this is really loud, though. <laughs> in my earbud. Sorry, I'm just speaking to Alex. That's better. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, so, yeah, yeah I, put, <laughs> I put gas in. That's as far as my knowledge goes, I think. Yeah. Um, but they're fantastic motors. They're really smooth. And they, they pull. And they got a torque. And they rev. And they do everything right. And um, I'm curious, how's the gearbox linkage? Is it nice? Is it good to shift? Well, uh, it, <laughs> so when I test drove it, it had, it had a gated shifter and then I was just roasting the clutch. Like I was trying to, I was putting it to first and I, you know, like I was stalling and roasting clutch. I was like, what the hell's happening? And then I, I thought I I've driven a fair amount of cars. Surely I haven't like had some sort of senior moment where I've forgotten to drive a stick. But as it turned out, the gated shifter was misaligned. So I was trying to start the car in like fourth gear. So, oh, so, <laughs> so you felt better that'll that do it. You. So then yeah. I felt, so I felt better. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice to shift. I mean, the, the shifting pattern, like the distance between first gear and reverse is tiny. So, and there's no lockout on reverse. So you have to just to make sure when you're at the lights, you know, you're not going to like floor it and then go backwards. But it's right. really, uh, um, it's just, oh man, I, I really love you to drive and see what you think. It's, it's so exciting to drive. Well, all right. Next, next time I do one of my rallies, you'll have to bring it. Um, all right, man. Because I'd love perfect that. Perfect on those roads. Let's for see sure. what you think on it. So, all right, look, so, I got a question for you. Yeah. Can we talk about this is a car on this year's bull market list? I okay. think this is a Bastardo car. If you're <laughs> okay. going to tell me yes or no. Yeah. The mid 80s, 85 to 93 Saab 900 Turbo. Oh, yeah. I like those. Those are cool. What are they called? Well, no, no, no. Is, 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 is it Bastardo or is this just quirky? What makes a Bastardo car is maybe what I want to know. Well, that's a good question. I guess, um, well, I guess a Bastardo car will be a car that's possibly overlooked, that has interesting things about it that people have mm. either forgotten or a car that's been maligned, but actually is like a 220 was, was, I always thought was in some ways a Bastardo choice because it suffered from like 30 years of a, of, a, of a comprehensive bad PR campaign, which had nothing to do with the car. <laughs> do you know what I mean? When it's actually true. it's a, it's a really, really great car yeah. to drive. But, but people, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think what happens with the car world is people get so stuck. P people kind of, it's, it's, they sort of end up repeating stories they've heard and those get passed on from generation to generation sure. of car people. And those stories may or may, not have, may or may not have anything to do with the actual car. 
Oh, here's one. I, 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 I had a root out all the time. Uh, they put on a wider tire so it has more grip. Totally false. <laughs> is, is that just generally about wider tires? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, the, the area of the contact patch is, is basically based on air pressure and, and weight. And I had a group from Michelin come up to car and driver and talk to us about grip. And they said, no, no, actually a taller tire will lengthen the contact patch. And that's, oh, that'll get you more lateral grip, not wider. Now okay. it's, I'm over, oversimplifying it, but those engineers were very upset when we would write about stuff like that. Here's another one. Right. Ideal weight distribution, 50, 50. Do you think that's good or bad? I mean, they're talking to the mechanical half wit man. So I would pro well, okay, <laughs> I'd pro I probably, I probably say, I feel like maybe you want to have a little bit more in the back than in the front. Is that right? Yeah, or wrong? I mean, I was part of the machine that pro propagated that as a great thing time right. and time again. Is that but not like true? So what, what, what's the ideal distribution? Well, it depends. Depends what you want. You know, for a race car, all the good race cars are rear way, rear biased. Right. You know, rear drive makes braking better, acceleration better, all that stuff. Right. So I don't know. It's just one of those things. Sorry, I interrupted you about the Saab. But no, I, I, car? I, I, I think so, man, because I... I think that it's it's kind of interesting and quirky and 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 I I have a, I've always had a soft spot for subs. I actually really like the very last sub they made that sedan. I thought was really beautiful. Beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, the I last think that's one before that, it died. I, yeah, yeah. I would put that on the list just because I think it's so beautiful looking. Um, I'm with and, you. and really just a cool bit of. I mean, I don't know what actually. You know what? Tom Hale, the guy I was just talking about, he owned one. Um, that's the oh. only one I've ever. That's the only one I've ever seen in in person. I just thought, it was, what a cool design that was. Totally well, cool. What so is you ever this? driven so, in any of these nine hundreds? Never. No. That's the one with the key. Is that the key by the gearbox? Keys in the center, center console. In the center. Yep. That's right. This is yeah. the, the really concave windshield. Yeah. Right, and uh, the hood sort of like, if I remember right, the way it opens is hinged at the front. And you got to open it and move it back. And then the whole That's thing. That's right. Pivots, it has, so yeah, it has a really interesting. Yeah. It's like kind of Super aerospace cool. hinge. I mean, the, yeah. I actually think that the, the some of those earlier subs, I, I don't know which ones they are, but they have the most amazing interiors and wheels. A guy was, I know was Ooh. selling like this beautiful orange corduroy interior with like these yeah amazing wheels. I mean, they're, they're, they're cool things. Really? So um, what is that? I what's one? A, you did? So Phil, I made a lot of mistakes in life, right? Just one of those. <laughs> I bought off of eBay for two grand. I bring my trailer out. It's in Westchester somewhere, somewhere outside of New York City. The guy wasn't even there. He's like, it's in a storage container. Just I'll leave oh, it open. That's, come not get a it. Good, that's not a good sign, man. Because he knew it was a, <laughs> shit, it was a shit, like a shit heap. He was like, yeah, yeah, go and get it. Just help yeah, you just do whatever you want. Disaster. Disaster. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like thinking like, well, did I just eat my 1500 bucks or do I put it in the trailer and bring it home? And I thought, ah. What? Wait, how could you tell it was a disaster when you got there? Like, what were the, what were the signs? <laughs> well, when I opened up the door and it smelled like mold, mold okay. and you could see Molds. it wouldn't even start. All the tires are flat. I didn't even know how I was going to get it out. I think I unhooked my trailer and yanked it out with my truck. I mean, it did was... He, did he say it was running and driving? Yeah, he thought it was, you know, needed a few things, but it's a, you know, it's a good car. And <laughs> that's why I was like, do I call this guy and and argue, but I felt really ashamed because I had seen the signs that it was not as advertised and I ignored them over the, the fever. What, what were the signs? Well, the signs were, you know, it's in a storage container. That was number one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, number two is he didn't really, it wasn't really, he didn't communicate really well. Didn't have all the records. Uh, wasn't sure about answering questions about the exhaust. It turns out it was a pretty solid car. The body was pretty solid. It didn't have a lot of rust. It just, it needed a clutch. It needed drive shafts. It needed all the hoses. I mean, it just needed pretty much just everything to bring it back on board. But the, the upside was I yanked it back and I found this big pile of stuff. You know who bought it originally was John Oates from Hall & Oates. No. Yep. <laughs> oh my God, that's fucking amazing. Holy and he had, he was such a cool guy. He, he from the uh, dealer, got like a performance pack for more boost. He paid $27,500 for the car as new. So this I thought, amazing. well. So wait, were there? Were, <laughs> there were, were no there like garage uh, uh, picks, like uh, what are they? Uh, guitar, guitar picks. picks. Were there, were like there but were there, was it, so was it like an old registration with his name and stuff on it? No, uh, if I remember right, it was the sales order. From the dealer. And how do you know it was the John Oates? I mean, I assume there's more than one. 
Right. I think I Googled it and it turned out he did have a, uh, somewhere it came up that he had a Saab, right. a silver Saab turbo. That is the funny fantastic. Thing was, it was supposed to be, I thought, a real sporty car. They are not. I mean, they are cruiser GTs, very soft, super comfortable. They almost are like a wagon with the room they have, but sure, not like sporty like I thought, because they look sporty, right? Well, ish. I mean, I would never think that that was like a, a kind of a a car to take on twisty roads. You didn't? Oh, okay. That was just me then. <laughs> I think that may have just been you, man. Wait, so I'm, I'm super interested to know, other than all the cars I own, what is on the top 10 of the bull market list? That's one. The Saab's on there. Okay. The Saab Liner Turbo. I what think else? those are starting to be appreciated because uh, people like us, Phil, middle-aged dudes, finally have some dough. And you know what you're talking you about, man. I'm 30. I just turned the big 3-0 <laughs> last week. Well, your hair color is amazing. It's like this It's silver fashionable. Color. The silver thing's super cool with the kids, man. <laughs> uh, the other one, which maybe you've probably driven these. You ever driven an R8? Um. Uh. Oh, Audi R8. Audi R8. Oh man, I've been, I've been, I've been uh, t talking about R8s for years now. Really? Oh yeah. I think that I've for, for I've I've been for the last five or six years I've been looking at R8 prices because I feel like uh, um, a manual R8 uh, f uh, in it, the the first ones the the first um, design was the best design. The, the the redesign they ruined the car. I think they I think what happened was they probably felt like. Um, it was a little too weird that side blade thing for most people yep. and so they just kind of toned it down and they lost mm -hmm. all this all of all that was interesting but a manual um r8 i think is genius totally so genius. that's on the list so you are in full support of this full support you're... of that man yeah totally. okay i love this as an artist as you are could that car design come from anywhere other than germany <laughs> wow well you got to think I mean, about it well it's hard to say i mean I mean, look, it's, it, does, it does have a sort of a certain like Dieter Rams, Braun, Teutonic, clean shape to it. I mean, the only quibble I had with the R8 is it sort of looked so similar to all the Audi offerings. Um, and part of so, the family, you could say, yeah, right? And I, w and I wish it was like slightly less part of the family. Uh, mm. But I really, but I really love, I, I would, I would, I, I mean, I've sort of toyed with the idea of getting one on off for years. So now it's probably too late, but what are they like, 80 grand? No, no, more than that, especially for a stick. Yeah. Oh, like okay. Last time I yeah. okay, last time I looked, they were like eighty grand. So okay, I missed the boat. You know, there are kits for you know. Okay, here's a question I wondered about because you're more in this sort of realm. Does it matter that it's the same platform as the Gallardo, the Lamborghini? Like, okay, does it hurt Lamborghini that it shared all this stuff with the Audi or not? Doesn't matter. I don't think it hurts Lamborghini. I think it helps Audi though. I think yeah. it helps. I think when people buy an R8, the idea that they're kind of buying a Gallardo, but maybe uh, better looking, <laughs> is is is. You don't uh, like the Gallardo? Uh, it's all right, man. I mean, those things are sleepers. Those V10 sticks, same thing. And you, you can get a kit where you can uh, neuter the front axle, so it's just rear drive. Oh, that's a car. Oh, oh. yeah. Yes. I mean. Uh, you know what? <laughs> yeah, that, actually, that would be pretty mental. All right, what else is <laughs> on this, man? That, that's pretty good. What else? I'm so interested to hear. Okay, the next one I think you're going to need uh, for your Brooklyn adventures is uh, a mid-'80s Toyota 4x4 pickup. <laughs> what Brooklyn <laughs> adventures? <laughs> just ge Well, actually, you need that kind of car in New York City, just generally given the state of the roads. Yeah. I like those. I oh, just think you and your, your, your onesie and stuff in a well, pickup <laughs> going to get caught. <laughs> man, I have a Pajero Evolution. Oh, okay. You're already on this. Okay, is that on, is that on the list? Yeah, but you want to be like an everyman, and the Toyota pickup will help you do that. I never. I want to be an. I, I never want to be an everyman. That's bastardo is not being everyman. Holy that, smokes! How did I get that so wrong? I'm yeah, so man. Jesus, I'm bro, bro. <laughs> I need to go to bastardo school. <laughs> There's a 10 DVD set available if you want to. That, <laughs> that will teach you the the ins and outs of bastardo. <laughs> I'd, I had one of these pickups and they're so cool. I mean, they're like anvils. The engines yeah. just never stop. And you know, they're all over like the, in, in the parts of the world that are still at war, they're still driving these things. And, sure. you know, they were part of that movie, um, back to the future. You remember he came back and there's the Toyota pickup sitting there. Do you remember that? Or were <laughs> no. you here? Did you ever see that? Yeah, I did. I don't remember okay. that though. Do you remember that part? No. Oh my God. It's the only best part of the movie. I, it comes back to the future. It's a brand new Toyota four by four in his garage. <laughs> I, I don't I don't remember that. I, have, I haven't seen it in like 20 years. Yeah, so this I, is I one of those. They're super cool. They're super cool looking. Super cool. These are one of those you can get 
10, 15 grand and you're going to be safe all day. Right. Super duper cool. Right. I see your interest is not peaked though, Phil. Did you not see the your... waning? No, I was thinking there's actually, there's actually a mid eighties, <laughs> there's a mid eighties uh, Land Cruiser in my garage. It's been restored and he debadged oh. it and, and painted it. Not in my garage, like the park, like the public parking garage where I park. Um, and he debadged it, painted it like a battleship gray and it looks amazing. FJ 62 or 60, you know, how many headlights does that have? Four or two? Uh, two, I think. Okay. That's the early 80s. Those are cool. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. Call those. Big yeah, wagon, right? Yeah, it's massive. It's just yeah. really cool, though. I love it. It's been there for yeah. years. I know. This is one of those things. Okay. Like the Toyota pickup, this Land Cruiser, you're probably a Progero. Like, they look so cool. But whenever I own them, I drive them for like a week or two. And I'm like, I hate this thing. It drives like a bus. And I No, you know what, it. man? You haven't, have you driven a Progero? No. Okay. You should drive it. I'm just telling you, man. The Progero <laughs> Evolution is the best bargain of the century. Yeah, but it's right dry, right hand dry, right? Yeah. But an automotive man such as yourself, that shouldn't be a problem. It's only getting worse as my inner ear fluid's drying up with age, you know? <laughs> I will say it takes me like a week to get used to it. takes me because I got a stick and it, oh. takes, me a, it takes me a week to, to like oh. stop trying to wind down the window instead of changing the gear. Well, you grew up in England, so this would be natural for you. No, no, I, I never really drove in England, so it's totally oh. unnatural. It's the work of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's but it's a great car man 300 horsepower really oh, wow. brisk to drive i mean it's it doesn't roll at all it's really it's nippy it's 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 really a cool thing and okay. it, it was the most successful paris dakar car ever okay for the next issue of the magazine which goes to almost a million people would could we work with you to start a page that is i don't know the name of it yet phil you're gonna have to help me with this but it's bastardo like, predicts Exactly. And I will always speak to myself in the third person. (laughs) (laughs) Could you put in a lot of stuff like he would go on to talk about his car? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Put in that flashy language. But no, no, no. Seriously, like you've got this weird, if you wouldn't mind, like the stuff that is you're thinking about. Because I'm happy to do that, man. You're coming up with this weird stuff that I, I haven't. I feel like I am deep in this, but then you come along and I'm like, oh, I'm just doing all the conventional stuff. Phil's you know what I would, okay, you know what go on that, you know what go on Bastardo Predicts list? The Isuzu Vehi Cross. Can't do it. Hate those things. So ugly. Oh, but yeah. man, I'm telling you, that's a super cool car. That design, for me at least, I think is amazing. I think, and when you've seen a car, it's, it's so futuristic and, and you look at it and you think, God, they were that that was an extraordinarily audacious bit of design that I still think looks, I mean, the headlights look rubbish today, but, but it's, it's interesting. Headlights always date a car. Have you noticed? Yeah, that's a great point. They sure do. When they were the, all the conventional ones where you can only buy two different types forever. Right. And then they went custom and they went crazy. Right. And they all yeah. fog. Yeah. And now, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're kind of those yellowy, like jaundiced <laughs> eggs. <laughs> Wait, okay. Via cross that came up and um, I nixed it because well, I don't know if it did or didn't. The production numbers are pretty low. So but, we try- but that to, but that to me is a perfect reason why something should be on the bull list, man. I mean, ah. a, 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 I mean, the, 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 <sighs> the, 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 the Mitsubishi Pajero, they made 2,500 of. And for a long time, they were like 20 grand. I, 20 I'm grand so, for the most oh. successful Paris Dakar homologation truck is crazy. I, I so appreciate you brought that up because... The list is really, uh, I wanted it to be an everyman list. My point was to show that the hobby is approachable. So for a lot of people, they can afford one fun car. If you can use it as sort of like a bank and you could buy it and enjoy it. And if the kids need braces, you can sell it and get your money out. Then why not do it? So that's why uh, we try and bias it, at least have some mass market machines that are uh, approachable or attainable for a lot of people. Do you know what I mean? Sure. But so yeah. how did the Ve- how did the Pajero not make it then out of interest? Well, we could it could be next year, but now that we've given this up, I don't see how. You've told everybody, Phil, about this. <laughs> you know, but, no, I'm just I'm 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 just curious about what are the what are the criteria that make up <laughs> this because because if yeah. it's an if it's an, like an Audi R8 is as if it's 120 grand. So Pajero now they you know, last year they were like twenty five, now they're fifty. Um, yeah. so how does uh, that well, work? We try and make, uh, the first thing that comes up is the valuation people look at all their data 
and they look at trends in terms of everything from, you know, what's the price been doing over the past two years? And also critically, like how many people are calling in to get quotes on these cars? That's a leading indicator uh, uh, of the interest of them out there. And so we come up with a huge list and then we do apply some sort of editorial judgment because I, I don't think it'd be wise to have all 10 cars where they only made 500 a piece. That's kind of For easy. Sure. I get it. So we try and mix up some trucks, some sport cars, some supercars, some, sure. you know, and, you know, come up with this, this sort of thing that can appeal to as many people as possible. Cause the whole point is an on ramp. Let's invite folks in. You and I know, we know how to do this. Well, we know how to lose money at this, but we get it. We're having fun. But, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of people out there where it may seem, um, you know, undoable. And so the whole point from day one was, nope, you can enjoy this. And it doesn't right. cost you much. Right. Does that answer your question, Phil, or did I, no, did no, I that makes tactfully perfect. not answer your question? No, that makes perfect sense, man. I mean, okay. I think that's how you want to do it. You want to have, you know, stuff yeah. that's affordable, stuff that's the that trucks, sports cars, whatever low production. I mean, low production doesn't always mean it's expensive. That's what people have right. sent. But, and, and often because it's, it's, it's inexpensive because people don't know or they've forgotten. Yeah. Okay. So one came up, the Nissan Pulsar SIR, something like that. It's, it's, it's not a quite a K, it might be a K car, but it was in Japan and it was special edition. Oh, the, really Nis the, the, the GTI, Nissan Pulsar GTI R? Yeah, it might've been that. That's genius. I drove that the other. My mechanic used to have one. I, that's a great, that's a left-hand drive. I mean, a right-hand drive car. Okay. So you're going to either hate me or understand me because I <laughs> killed it. And they said, why? This thing's going to go crazy. I'm like, well, there's maybe a hundred in the country. And then if you're going to buy one, you got to figure out how to do it out of the country and then ship it. So I don't, I don't think, I don't think any of those things should, I, th I, I, well, look, I, I personally okay. feel I mean, I know it's different for me, man, because I've been bringing in cars for years now. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's not, it doesn't seem like, an in, and I know for a lot of people that seems insurmountable, like they don't know how, where to start with that. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that's a really, really good car. So you're saying that I made a mistake. <laughs> Is this where you fire me? This is where that piece of paper gets slid back to you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I, I just, I, I think that, I think you're right to have, a, th there are, it's a tricky thing because you, you, you're right in the sense you want to have a list that's attainable. But I think, you know, um, I don't know. I think there's, there's so many interesting cars. I mean, that's a really, really great car. Oh, okay, put it on Bastardo's list. And you have your heart's <laughs> content. All these weirdo cars that nobody could buy. How about that? All okay? right. I'll just enrage people. <laughs> with I'm, I, I'm very big on the uh, the... I, I want cars to be enjoyed by as many people as possible. I want to show them this is the most awesome, fun world. You're going to meet incredible people. You're going to have fantastic experiences and you're going to appreciate these machines with all this engineering went into it. So that's always the lens that I look through for all this stuff. That's an excellent lens. But I also well, think that I think for people, if you want to, the, the thing about the bull market is if you, if you want to, if you want to preempt people, you have mm -hmm. to have a couple of things. I think you have to have, uh, if you want to get a bargain on something that may turn into a, a bit of a piggy bank, you have to have audacity, imagination, and you have to, it's not necessarily going to be easy. Do you know what I mean? Like you, yeah, have to, okay, like you, you say, okay, I'm, I'm willing to, I'm not going to look at, everyone's looking at 911s. Let's look at something else. Like I remember years ago, I, I, I was yeah. looking at, at, I was really interested in the 924 and I bought, I ended up buying um, a 924 Carrera which okay. they made 400 of. And then I found a 924 Carrera GTS Club Sport, which they made 16 of. Ooh. And no one was paying attention. They, were, they homologated those cars for Le Mans, but no one was paying attention to those cars because they started with 924. Right. So I think you have to, you have to be imaginative and you have to be willing to like suffer a little bit. And by take that, I mean, risk. well, not only take the risk, but I mean, I think that, okay, I've found something that I really think is interesting and it's going to involve me like calling up people to find out how to ship a car. Yeah, totally. I, I think that's, that is a really interesting approach. Um, I think that's great. I'm just going to be straight up with you. The whole point of the bull market list was I'm, I'm going to take the risk out of it for you. <laughs> right. By the, but the, by the time it's on the bull market list, it is bull market ish. <laughs> right. It is a little you know bit. what I mean? Like, you want to get the point. Of, been, right. Yeah. Okay. The, pro, the point is you want to get to it before it gets on the list. But the audio, look, the audio rate is, is I mean, that's genius. 
I love that thing. Yeah, I can't I think, believe they're um, 120 grand. It's a, it is a very fair um, uh, feedback and, and Phil, feedback is always welcome. I really appreciate your honest feedback. I value it and I will move forward with this genuine <laughs> you sound like a hostage insight. reading. You sound like a hostage reading from a piece of paper now. <laughs> I accept your feedback, Phil. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you are brilliant as usual. Uh, so, um, What else is on the list, man? Uh, this is one you probably like, the Suzuki Cappuccino. See, these are right-hand drive hard to get from Japan cars. That's a, that is the cappuccino. And so I, yeah. I, the, the, the people who wanted this won that debate. And I figured, okay, the cappuccino has been around longer. There's more of them here. All right. I can't have two of these weird right-hand drive Japanese cars. <laughs> I'll take one. I love those, man. I think those are super cool. I would also uh, throw in the Toyota Serra. That's the going or the scissor wing car, The going. Right? Yeah. So the story is that the... Um, um, Shit, what's the guy's name? The guy who designed the McLaren F1. He took Gordon he Murray. Yeah, he took he got the idea for those doors for the F1 doors from the Toyota Serra. That's the legend. No yeah. Oh wow. And though, I mean, it's an amazing thing. The, the <laughs> yeah, like how do you not own like the Mazda AZ1? That's kind of your kind of car too, right? Uh, I like the AutoZam, man. That's a cool thing. I I like those too. You know, uh, Haggerty has one in their collection. Really? So if you make it to uh, Traverse City, you can drive it. Uh, I tried to get in it. I couldn't get in it. I've, I, I can fit. Yeah, you see, I'm 5'10". Oh, yeah. You need to wear... I, I, if you, it's 5'10", wearing Spanx. I can get in there, right? I could just shoehorn in there, man. <laughs> That's your secret? <laughs> That's my secret. It's Spanx, man. Then I can get in anything. <laughs> all right, this one, you're going to... you're gonna. I'll take all the, you know, the criticism you want, but this is one of those uh, <laughs> cars that you're going to say, duh... It's the uh, the first generation 350Z Nissan or 350Z as you call it as you, as you English yeah, yeah. I I, can't, I mean look I mean is that that haven't those been hot for years I don't think they they've sort of I I think they're coming back in interest like you know rear drive stick shift you know it's a buzzy but pretty beefy V6 right. I think they they really fell into used car land and now they're turning into uh, these are something you should keep it's just like brz's well first gen brz's in 10 years those will be oh we should have kept those because they're really interesting really cool cars yeah okay nice to drive i've never driven that all right here's a Passardo car the hummer h1 you've owned one <laughs> yeah i've always been a big a huge hummer fan <laughs> wait is that the one with the super shiny wheels no no well you could get them with their shiny wheels but this is the, the military version oh okay look the, the military treated. version the, i mean it's it, <laughs> It's t the what was the the what was the GM version they made for consumer people? That's it. The oh, that General the one? Hummer H1. Oh, you mean they made an H2 and an H3, and now they're using the Hummer for the electric pickup that just came out. So was the eight, but the H1 was the was the full military spec one. Is that yes? That's right. Okay, the military spec one. Uh, <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger drove one. No, I know, I know, and I kind of love Arnold because um, he's he's a Bastardo he's founding member. He is a big, he's like he's like the Moses of of bastardos, man. <laughs> he's the OB, the original bastardo. Yeah, well, because okay, you know he's a he's a. I mean, I could go on a long. He's such an interesting individual. Totally. There's a, yeah. there's a person who is in, and who. Do you ever watch that film Pumping Iron? Yes. I mean, you realize how smart and how kind of wily he was. Totally. And and, and really and but sort of charming about it and but anyway. Um, I well, love speaking that of him real quick, there was some other movie I watched and it 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 contrasted the difference between like a James Kahn, who's like an actor's actor, yeah, and how prickly he was and how he didn't want to do this and all this stuff. And then there's Arnold on the other side going, Yeah, what do you want me to do? Another <laughs> Yeah, sounds great. How much you can pay me? Awesome. Right. What do you you know, I'll right. you want to do Conan? Well, because I, but cause, sure. well, I Arnold was I mean, I think he had he it's interesting actually. That's an interesting comparison. Because I think Arnold was understood he was a he was like a circus performer and what exactly and he, and he maximized that and he was not yeah. afraid or ashamed of it he just was into it. Whereas I think if you're like an actor's actor, it's a different thing. It's about the craft and the methodology and you know you're not well you're like not, Arnold could never be Sonny from The Godfather, right? <laughs> Can you imagine that would be an amazing? Uh, they should re they should do like a deep fake with him as Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> amazing i love i look i'm a big fan of kind of military hardware for civilian use even though it i feel like it does have a small soupçon of douchiness to it it's still wait wait cool. what does that mean soupçon is french for like a uh, um like a smattering 
okay. <laughs> Learned so it, Thank you. But it is, it is, I mean, they are kind of, I mean, if it was, if it was, it, they're, they're, I would prefer, I mean, that, that's the only one to have the, 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 the concept, the following models, the H2 were just like, just utterly miserable, those things. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't I see mean, Adam at none of the fun. Yeah, yeah. And then they always had the shiny wheels and it was just, they were always yellow. <laughs> You know, you know, like I have this fantasy, like I've got an H1, I'm in Brooklyn or Manhattan and it's so wide, like you can't even, like, right. you're just going to sideswipe everything down the street, but yeah. you don't care because you yeah. keep going. That's right. You're just <laughs> knocking off mirrors and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. There is something to be said for that. Yeah. That's interesting. But, That's an interesting choice. So what do those go for? Uh, uh, let me see. I don't know. They're, they're pretty they're, I mean, reasonable is not the right word. They're more expensive than I thought, but give me a second. To, I, I forgot off the top of my head. Excuse me. The start out. I should have had all this a little cheat sheet, but they're, they're expensive. And, you know, they're kind of weird in that, you know, a lot of the stuff, I guess it's around, but not everybody fixes them. Presumably you could go to a GM dealer and they'll fix it. Uh, but mm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to take that risk. Are those a hundred grand? Yeah, I think they are. Let me see wow. if I can find it. Of course. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, top condition one is about 120. <laughs> I love that top condition. Like really, what was that? the glove box opens. <laughs> That's what that means. <laughs> Wait, that means top <laughs> condition to you? Yeah, for a Hummer. For a Hummer it does. I feel like what's in there that could there's so there's nothing in there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, well if it has no rust, maybe it has like right. some dents and a lot of miles, you could get it for as little as fifty or sixty. Actually, a really a really fucked up one would be great. Like one that that's all, the one you want. Yeah, you want one that's just all like the paint's coming off and all the rest of it. I mean, to drive around the minty Hummer H1 would that would be kind of that. I don't think that would be cool. It needs to look like it's been through some stuff. I know. The thing is, again, I come back to this. They're pretty miserable to drive. Oh, I'm sure it's utterly miserable to drive. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're, like the, the the whole interior is taken up by the engine and drive shaft because it yeah, was has that up. massive yeah has yeah. that massive yeah and yeah. and your passengers are so far away you need like a walkie talkie <laughs> that's a that's a car for the in-laws <laughs> if you're just taking them you're picking them up at the airport and then you you know you're like i got yeah. you too far i got here <laughs> that was like the jetsons things you remember that they used to have the little pot off to the side for their mother-in-law Do you remember <laughs> no I that's funny <laughs> Yeah, what, so what that else? one's on the list. I thought right. uh, what, I thought that what, might be a Bastardo car, and it sounds yeah. like it is. I'm not sure. I mean, I oh, I would. It's interesting. What else is on the list, man? I'm, okay, I, this I'm one. Loving hearing this list. I think I think this could be. It, it's not. It's a. It's an off. It's not a typical Bastardo car, but I think that makes it a Bastardo car if you follow my logic. <laughs> <Are> you sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a 1968 AMC AMX. Is that the, that's not the Javelin, is it? It's the shortened version of the Javelin. Stubby, oh. really cool looking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, actually um, love the Javelin. You, uh, yeah. You do? This is yeah. Long. I think the Javelin, but in the, in that, in that race spec livery, the red, white, and blue race livery that it was, it, you know what I mean? In the. Yeah, the AAR car. Yeah, that's cool. I love that. that the AMX so you, is cool. Yeah, so that is that. I mean, it's a muscle car. It's a domestic, but yeah, I think I it so. feels, yeah, made in Kenosha, Wisconsin. <laughs> the nexus of Bastardo. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's what I'm thinking too. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's, I mean, that's where all Bastardos come from, Kenosha, man. It's a little known fact. I am actually okay, so from Kenosha. Y oh, yeah. The English thing is bull the English thing is bullshit, man. It's just I, I, went, I did I did a, I did a semester abroad. And I came back with an English accent. <laughs> you know, I've always wondered if I, if I, if I had done the same, would people think I'm smarter? They probably would. Absolutely, man. It's all like I've got I, going. They would, after I said something, they go, "God, that's insightful." Yeah, if I did it in <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. I mean, seriously, most of what I say is bollocks, but you know, English <laughs> accent. It's like Einstein levels now. What, what else? What else is on the list, man? You got AMS. Harley Davidson knucklehead. Oh, I'm, I know nothing about bikes. This is uh, one of the early ones. This is really the bike that put Harley on the map. They were very durable. They were fast. Everyone from male male men used them. What is to it racers. with everyone who drives? What is it with everyone who drives a Harley? Is like a walking billboard for a Harley who rides a Harley. Like they've got the Harley bandana, the leather jacket, the the, yeah. the trout, the the sneakers. Whatever. Everything's branded. 
Like it always seemed to me that Harley used to be the brand to represent rebellion. But how rebellious is it if you're just like going through the gift shop and buying everything they sell? Well, Phil, you're the marketing exec. I don't know. You tell me. I mean, that's sort of like brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not a market. Well, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't know bikes were on there. What about Moto Guzzi? Which one you got in mind? I don't know, man. I just love saying the name. It is a great name. Isn't Give it, it a go, man. You know go that. on. Give it a Moto Guzzi. Moto Guzzi. See? Isn't it satisfying to say that? Oh, it's the best. It is. It's like saying, <laughs> okay, how, how should we say, uh, I hear this so many different ways. It's that uh, uh, pros, prosciutto or prosciutto. How do you say it? Oh, <laughs> You're prosciutto. an international man. You got it. Prosciutto. Prosciutto. Yeah, I think you say, okay. why is the O silent? I think only, they only say, know, in, the, in the Sopranos, they were prosciutto. Yeah, give yeah so prosciutto. Yeah. where I grew up in Jersey, um, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. they all said it. Prosciutto. prosciutto. Yeah. You want some prosciutto? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then, what about gabagool? I don't even know what that is. What is it? It's, I, I don't even, they always, <laughs> I always hear this, I always hear Tony <laughs> saying that in the Sopranos, like, hey, give me some gabagool. I, I, I think it's a cheese of some kind. I could be wrong. <laughs> it sounds like something that could be in a Pearl Jam lyric. I saw some uh, TikTok <laughs> where the guy tried to write out what Eddie was saying in like one of the early songs. It's uh, hysterical. Uh, right? Yeah. That's a total non -sequer. Okay. <laughs> Last one is Corvette. There's a couple more. This is what I think Stingray. you're going to turn your nose at. No, it's the first Z06. Not the first one, but this, the oh. first modern one, the 01, 04. This is that crazy motor, Phil. Have you ever uh, sampled an LS7 engine? <laughs> I have not sampled, sir. <laughs> My palate has not well, had the joy. I feel like I should be like, like, like a snifter of brandy. <laughs> it's got a woody yeah. top note, this Corvette engine. Uh, oh, these engines are insane. They rev to like over 7,000. They're, I can't remember, 6 liter, 6.2 liter. The piston speeds, because the strokes are long, are some of the highest that were ever achieved in a production car engine. And this was the car they put it in. So That was like a tsunami kind of, of nerdery, man. That was amazing. <laughs> Piss, long piston. Yeah. I didn't know. That was amazing. I don't know what you said, but it was impressive. <laughs> it's wonderfully it's long excellent. piston strokes. <laughs> I can see whatever I want. And I'll yeah, fool him every time. Excellent. <laughs> It's so true, man. Well, I, I, I mean, it's funny. I was talking to a guy yesterday who owns a, a Stingray convertible. which a I new actually, one? No, the, from the early 70s. Oh. And he was saying it was terrible to drive. But I think from a design standpoint, that is right up there, those convertibles. Total bastardo car, right? They're, they're really beautiful to look at. Yeah. Totally are they beautiful. Are they terrible to drive? Awful. Like, Why? Really? I mean, first off, you can't even get in them. I mean, oh. the, the, the seating compartment is across and below a ledge, like the sill. It's, it's probably, actually, you know what? It's probably easier than your Jag. <laughs> right. Not that bad. But, uh, and then the, the Jag the has a convenient wheel. handbrake that, and on, the, on the sill that spears your nuts as you get in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a kebab. Yeah, I mean, it kebabs them. <laughs> yeah, but those, those, uh, they're called C3 Corvettes. They're, the chassis is really flexible. And I think it all could have been fixed if it wasn't for what came out in the 70s when they hadn't got a handle on emission controls and they're only making 150 horsepower. I mean, I feel like that would be a then, car right for resto mod. Yeah, so absolutely. Jimmy Johnson did one with Chevy. It's silver. That is about the baddest looking thing I've ever seen. So I totally agree. Guy who That's the, your next project. Is that the Cowboys guy? Jimmy John. Oh, no, he's no a, that's he, the uh, uh, seven-time NASCAR championship. Oh. <laughs> Not Jimmy Dean, the sausage geezer? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would make more wait, sense if it was a NASCAR guy. Wait, you, 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 you brought up some movie. Jimmy Dean, the sausage king from somewhere. What movie was that from? <laughs> was that? I have no idea, man. Back to the future. Something like that. Okay, but yeah, the C3, the, the Z06 with that motor. They're only going to go up, you know, they're fascinating engine that they're not, they're no longer making. And they're really not that crazy expensive. Like a really good one is $35,000. Okay. And it'll run doors off of almost everything. Aguara. Now we, we got two less that I think are uh, Bastardo. And <laughs> you said everything is Bastardo, man. The whole bloody top <laughs> 10 list has been Bastardo, according to you. Let's hit the, let's well, hit the remaining still, two. <laughs> I, 
I mean, I think I'm here to sell my bull market list. And so of course <laughs> I want to all to be the Ricardo. You're just trying to build bridges, man. <laughs> I mean, it's a brilliant brand. Why wouldn't I want to you know, re, <laughs> re-opt it for myself? I mean, I Fair, you make a good point, man. You make a good point. So what are the last two? Uh, okay, the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren. Oh, yeah. Is that the- What's your take on that? Is that the one with the going thingies, doors? It had scissor doors, not quite Scissor doors, scissor but, doors, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I heard they were, I think, actually, it's funny. I was talking about that the other day because some I saw one. Um, I think they look pretty amazing. I don't know. Aren't they flawed to drive, though, or not? Or am I wrong? I mean, I remember I was a car driver when these came out, and it's the coolest looking thing ever. Although it yeah. does look like one of those things from, what was that, that... Um, yeah, I better not go there. Some animated <laughs> short they did on Saturday Night Live. It looks like one of their cars because you know it's got this what, really long nose. What what do they what do those go for? They're expensive. They're well over half. They're they're somewhere between two hundred fifty and five hundred thousand. Okay. So way more than I thought. They didn't make that many of them, and um, I drove a I drove them a lot, and I couldn't wait, and I couldn't. But they're like really more powerful SLs. Mercedes. Are they are they really fun to drive? No, they're <laughs> very cushy. They're very comfortable. Oh, the air conditioning works great. They're really wait. Not why is the for... XJ two twenty not on this list? I demand to know. <laughs> I think because once you bought it and you Instagram the hell out of it, the world the the word got out, Phil. So there's nothing I don't think left I, I, man, you greatly you grossly underestimate. And it, my, and it's too self serving. It's you, too self serving. That's like you, putting a Miata because I got a Miata on the list. <laughs> You grossly overestimate my powers of persuasion in the general in the world at large, man. Sadly, what's number one? What's number? Is there number one? Is this? Is well, is there... no, we don't. They're all great. All the cars are great. It's okay. the Lamborghini Murcielago. Okay. Which V twelve? Right. Which, is that the? Is that nineties? No. Uh no, the later one. It's the two thousand and one. Okay. I don't know what generation they were, but they, that's when they kind of figured out how to make them. So it was a generation after the Diablo. So they okay. were reliable. They were super fun. Still had the V12. And I, they had these really cool little air intakes that when the engine gets hot, they sort of expand out oh, from the side those, of the car. Oh, I love, okay. I love that car. That's super cool, man. Yeah. I'm into it. It revs to 8,500 RPM. Yeah, it shrieks. Shrieks. Yeah. And they're still, I mean, this is serious money, but the best one in the world could be had for 350 grand. Okay. That is serious money. Yeah, it's serious. Uh, those money. are cool. Those like, are cool, man. Anything as long as it's not like yellow or some shouty color. That's the thing I have. That I, <laughs> yeah, I I think those are cool, man. I like those. Yeah, I mean, would you trade your XJ two twenty for it? Not a chance, man. I mean, the only reason, really? I, yeah, well, because look to me, um, the the when you look at the two twenties colleagues uh, of of the period, like the F forty ish or nine five nine or what else? Uh, EB110, that kind of stuff. The, F, the 220 is an absolute bargain, number one. Number two is, it's, I think, um, if you didn't know anything about brands and cars and say the 220 and the EB110 and the 959, all those cars drove into a parking lot, everyone would look at the 220. Because from a design standpoint, it's incredibly audacious, I think. Oh, and, I agree. And, and, and yeah. all the other stuff, it's not the other things aren't super cool. I love the EB110, but they are... To me, they are sort of incremental designs. They're not, the, the 220 was radical. Um, and it's really amazing to drive, which is really surprising <laughs> and real relief. Like it's a relief to spend a shitload of money on a car and find out it's great to drive. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I know what you mean. I think the 959, I've never thought they were pretty. I, I mean, they're cool. They're car. cool looking, but then they're, they're, yeah, they're not like I, I wouldn't. I'm trying to think of cars. From, oh, you know what? I mean, you know what I would put up there with a 220, oddly enough, but not from a driving perspective, is the Vector. Yeah, I drove on uh, recently. They're, they're terrible to drive, right? I've heard. I, I didn't like it. I mean, it's just a, you know, a torque converter. It just kind right. of stinks. And turbo turbo lag. Yeah. And yeah, it's a three-speed slush box or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, much better built than I expected. I mean, they really took their time and right. you could tell it's a hand built thing and beautiful and all that stuff. But I'm just talking yeah. from, I'm just talking from a design standpoint. The vector is, is to me like of the nineties, the vector and the, and the 
220 are probably the peak 90s cars, just from a design yeah. standpoint. Not, not for, oh, for sure. Not for, not for driving. The, the, the 220 is really good. I took the 220 on, on all these twisty roads a couple of weeks ago, a month or so ago, and I was surprised and shocked at how good it was. Because I always thought, oh, this is too big to be anything other than a GT, and it wasn't. It was really good. Um, I'm, well, I mean, the 220 has the added advantage. Like, like the Mercy Elego, one of the reasons it's on the list is there's just a general rush to Italian supercars that are still analog, right? Sure. You yeah. can still get a stick shift with the V12 in this thing. It's probably one of the last ones. Yep. And it has all the modern amenities because your 220 is similar, right? Well, it's a six, but, <laughs> but other than that. But I mean, it's a stick shift, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the 220 is kind of like, it's like a, my comparison is, is it's like driving a McLaren 720S if the McLaren had no ABS, no traction control and was a stick shift. Same kind of experience, I think. Yeah, yeah. The McLaren's an amazing car. I, you know, your the reputation thing at your your Jag. I'm, I hate to say this. I don't mean anything against you, Phil, but I have this <laughs> vision, like, er, like, like everywhere you're driving it. In my head, I'm picturing like you start to see smoke billowing into the passenger compartment. <laughs> then you you get you get a little quizzical look on your face. So that's not right. Why? Why? But you think they burst, they burst into flames? Well, I'll yeah, tell you what. I know. What is that? I'll tell you what, man. It's the only problem- unfair. The problem with 220s is that they just they just sat in like rich geezers collections for decades. So all of the 220s around have, you know, 1500 miles, 2000 miles on them. And so they were never driven. So then when people start driving, them, they have all these problems because they were never driven. Oh, my gosh. But I know I know people who have 220s who regularly like I know a guy in England who drives his regularly across the across the channel, does business trips to Europe in them. No problem. Like once they're sorted out, it, look, it's like any car. For the most part, I've found in my experience that almost every car is reliable if it's sorted. Really? Yeah, I've, I've never really had a, pro, a car that's consistently problematic. So then you're going to commit to driving this, this weird Di Tommaso to Ohio all the way across Pennsylvania? Oh, totally, man. The first, the first mm-hmm. day I had that car, I put uh, 900 kilometers on it. And it did everything. It worked. But it's a BMW engine, so why wouldn't it? Well, you know, you got electronics and exhaust <laughs> and stuff bolted to that. You got a fuel tank. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been it's been great, man. I mean, uh, I had a yeah, it's been it's been. I mean, I I it, the, my De Tomaso was the factory car, so it had never really been driven. Um, so I think it had like nine hundred kilometers on it when I bought it. Something stupid. I hate that. I'd much rather have a car with thirty thousand kilometers on it. Yeah, you know, over the time that I've done this job, I, I can remember this was maybe about 10, 15 years ago. We did the first, I was at Road Track, we did the first real test with a singer. And I remember talking to Rob Dickinson, and they're, you know, those beautiful modified Porsches that he makes. Sure. And I said, well, Rob, this is what we want to do. We want to do drag strip launches. We want to know how fast it is. We're going to take it to the track and we're going to slide the hell out of it for photos. And so you think that's going to be okay? And he was like, oh my God. I just want to see the thing driven like mad. He's like, nobody drives them. Drives me insane. I want this thing driven. That's why we made it. And um, yeah, that's what we hear all the time. I mean, these cars. It is an interesting quandary, isn't it? Like people like like Rob build those cars to be driven, but then they're never driven. They get stuffed away and then they get sold at auction, you know, five years later with delivery miles on them for a shitload of money. Yeah, I mean, I guess they, you know, probably the design makes somebody really happy for a long time. But one of the most, speaking of this, the most, I still remember one of the most glorious things. You remember that first McLaren of the new one, what do they call it, the MP? The 12C. Something. I I, th- yeah. I just posted on that last week, man. I think that's the best looking McLaren there is. Oh, all day. They, I think they went downhill after that. I agree. Yeah. But I hear there, even the McLaren people, we did something with a 720 and, and the, the mechanic was there to make sure we didn't break it. And I said, well, uh-huh. which one of these do you buy? He's like, don't buy the 12 C. <laughs> I know. I know. I mean, that's everyone I've heard, everyone I've spoken to has had miserable, like, you know, 40 grand, whatever, like new, they have to get a new engine or whatever it happened on a, on an 8,000 mile car or all sorts of terrible stories, which is unfortunate because from a visual standpoint, it's so, I think it's the best looking. I wonder if there's just yeah. not a way to make them reliable or you'd have to kind of rebuild. No, the I, that's what, that's what shocked me too. I thought after all those years of warranty repairs, they would have figured it out. But 
The one I saw, I was it was at uh, like a hotel in Las Vegas where you know it has that big uh, overhang and everybody pulls their cars up and somebody had a black twelve C mm. and it was just streaked in salt and grime and grook and I, I looked cool. in it because I was like, who is this person? And you could tell they'd just been on like a week long road trip. There's like Pringles cans in there <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. Pringles and, and gum wrappers, like, right? Yeah, I was just like. Oh my God, it's the best thing I've seen all week. You're just, and I didn't get to meet the person. I waited around and hopefully I thought maybe I could and just, you know, shoot the breeze. You see, that's actually, that's actually when you know you're a real car nerd, man, is when you, you look at a car like that, you see it's a total dump inside and you want to hang around to see who's driving that thing around. Like that's, I a, did. That's, that's right. cool, man. <laughs> I mean, everyone I know says, to, everyone I'm, I've, cause I, cause I posted on the 12C last week and everyone's, everyone emails me and says, oh, you have to get one, you have to get one of the warranty, the manufacturer's warranty. That's the only way you can own that car. You can still get that warranty? I think so, yeah. I think when you buy it from a dealer, you can then buy like a you know five-year warranty for whatever, like five grand or something, which is peanuts compared to what it's going to cost you. The only thing I would suggest that you might want to rethink that is like two years ago, uh, Mikhail Haggerty and I, we went to the Tail of the Dragon. I brought, uh, I have an Avora GT. And How's we that? Borrowed a Mac- oh, I love that car. I think yeah. I thought it was the best car ever. I love the thing to death. That's why I bought it. I thought I'm going to get one while I can still get something like this. And then I drove the McLaren and it's like, oh, there's always somebody richer, thinner. Better looking. <laughs> Which McLaren was it? It was a 720 coupe. I mean, yeah. it was really um, an amazing machine to drive. I mean, of course, really, really fast, but like all the details I thought were right. The The build quality was quite high. It was usable. You could, I just... I don't know. I couldn't say enough good about it. So that's why I might say like that might be the better car than the 12C. Oh, look, I'm sure mechanically it's a better car. I just think visually there's something really lovely about the kind of understatement of the, of the 12C. That, that, I mean, I feel like the 12C came out and I think McLaren sort of got bullied by the general populace into making something more like a Lamborghini. Oh, interesting. What do you mean in looks or what? In looks. I think that when, mm. because remember when the 12C came out, people, everyone said, oh, it just looks kind of plain and boring. And there was so much, and it was such a loud chorus. I think McLaren got bullied into sort of making something with swoops and this and that and intakes and all the rest of it. Um, although I do like the P1. I think the P1 is really beautiful. Oh, we're going to have to agree to disagree on that thing. I think really? it looks like some weird science oh. fiction creature. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that thing, man. <laughs> Um, what was I going to say? Something of critical oh, so wait, importance. Could we just, uh, could, before we, let's leave the bull market list. Thank you for your, uh, your interest. You know, it's all over the Haggerty.com. It's on our YouTube channel. Mr. Camisa did a great episode about it. Super fun. Love to hear your comments. You know, did we pick wrong? Why do we pick this? But I will tell you, we go back and we see how our people did. And the success rate is over 90%. For your so, bull market list. Yes. It's, this is the fifth or sixth one. So I feel like if I did um, a bull market list, man, my successor would be in the 12% region. 12%? <laughs> that would be my success rate if I was doing a bull market list. Like I'd be picking the Isuzu Vague Cross and all these kind of things to people like, what, what are you smoking? Okay, let's go back to that. If it's such a great car, why haven't you bought one? Because did you I just, just notice it again? No, no, I'm really into it, man. Because there's, look, there's, I just don't have the space or the money. Like I could put 10 grand or 15 grand into that, but I could probably, I'd prefer to put that money to fixing one of my current cars. Wait, wait, no, I'm curious. You'll have a good perspective of this because that car came out 20, 25 years ago, right? Yeah. And you didn't really, maybe you're going to, you're going to claim, but I think you're full of it <laughs> that you've been thinking about that car the whole time. I but have. you just noticed Oh, stop. Since, I have, man. Since 1993. That well, why car's you never left my mind. No, I'm, I'm joking, man. No, okay. I, just started, I just started looking at them and I thought, wow, that's an amazing piece of design that has aged so well. I mean, just from a, it's so radical. Um, and for the money, I mean, you know, why not? No, I was thinking like in the public consciousness, like as an artist, you're aware of this and things all of a sudden become interesting again. Do you know what I mean? Like, that were forgotten. And I think that's what your Bastardo is somewhat aligned with. Yes or no? I'm, I'm just <laughs> curious about that. I have nothing to say other than asking you. <laughs> well, I'm not really sure what the question is. Uh, you're asking, asking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the shrooms are kicking in, Larry. <laughs> I think, Phil, I was rambling. Help me, help me. Help me. I, I mean, you're asking why I, why, I mean, I do find the, the, I do find intellectually interesting the idea that 
that I'll suddenly look at a car and go, oh, that's really cool. And I have kind of, I don't know why I hadn't, and I, I guess it's just because I come, I just see a picture of it or something, or I see one on the street and I suddenly think, oh, that's amazing. And I haven't thought about yeah. it in a long time. But it's also interesting when there's things that you didn't think were amazing that you suddenly think are amazing. I, and I'm always curious about what makes, what makes me change my mind. I don't really know what it, what it is. But well, it sounds like the, this, the third generation Corvettes are on that list. Number one. Right? They've, <laughs> they've been in, no, I mean, they've been in the background forever. You mean, you mean, a, sti- you mean a Stingray? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I think it, I mean, if it was mechanic, if you could, if there was some changes you could do to make it interesting to drive, I think that those convertibles, it works for me better as a convertible than the coupe. Uh, as a coupe, it looks a bit too much like the Cheetah somehow. Well, I mean, what is it that, I'm curious about this, what you said before, like, okay, this thing's been around for decades and only recently has it generated personal interest for you. You're talking about the Corvette or the Zuzu? Anything, right? Like, what is it? What's the trigger? Is it like it's new again? I don't don't know. I just, I'm just like, I just start noticing design ideas, design details. Like for instance, I like the Subaru SVX with those, that was a Jujaro design that had those yeah, really yeah. cool windows. I feel like that's interesting looking to me. Um, oh my God. <laughs> you have to go now. I've said too much. No, no, I'm just like, I'm uh, like, yeah. those windows, you just saw, like, you just that wasn't a design stuff. feature. That was an engineering flaw that they had to get around. I love those <laughs> windows, man. You know, who has, the DeLorean has those windows too. Yeah. Like you can't pay okay. tolls of those windows. <laughs> Yeah, it's a like New York problem, though. It's the rest of us in flyover states. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, it, it, and it's really lovely to root around in the, in the corners of, and, and find out and look at and find things that are interesting. And I'll tell you what, oddly enough, like with the Zuzu, I posted that on that. And I got so many comments about people going, oh, my God, I love that. I mean, it was a deluge of people. It was kind of surprising. They kind of forgot about it. Yeah. And then when they see it, they're like, oh, it's really radical and interesting. Okay. I have a theory. Anything with flared fenders at some point is going to be really popular. Again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you're onto something there, man. For sure. <laughs> oh, you know, well, who doesn't like bo- box arches, wheel box, whatever they're called. Wheel, uh, yeah. Anyway, those yeah, things are yeah. genius, man. Yeah, those things are genius. So what else is on the board but start list? Anything else in particular? Like we're giving it away now, but we got the Pajero. I'm you know what I down. really love is um, yeah. I love the Volvo. I think it's the 262 Bertone. The two door, it's that the, the Bertone coupe that they made in the 80s with the chopped roof. Ah, yes. Didn't they that, put a vinyl roof on that too? Yeah, there, there was vinyl or not vinyl, but it's, I mean, the interior is insane. What is it? Why do you like it? It's just because it's a cool design because they've taken this Volvo, but then they've chopped the roof so it looks gangster. Yeah, that's not something you say about Swedish cars very often. <laughs> you're, you're onto something there, man. It's not a word that is, is in, comes in conjunction with Sweden, with Swedish design. Oh, it's super gangster. Actually, yeah. I would, you know what I would love? I've been trying to buy one for ages is a Volvo 850. I think it's T5, T5R. The wagon. The tur- yeah, the brick, the yellow brick from the mid-90s. That they, yep, yep. They, did, they did saloon car racing in. That's cool. That's really cool. Yep. Finally, finally, I've got a car you like. <laughs> I'm totally into this Di Tommaso. If I could find one, I'd have to drive it for a see, see what it's like. There's one I mean, on Bring a Trailer. Oh, is there? A Bucketta. Yeah, in, my price range. It, yeah they're asking. Uh, uh, I think. Well, you don't know what it. You don't. It's a. I think it was a thousand bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a personal rule I've had to live by. It's been very painful to come to this, but I've really had to. I'm just not going to, uh, I don't buy anything I don't see physically anymore. Okay. I made a lot of dumb moves. Have you really? What, uh, like what? Well, other, that than the, other than that sub in the container. <laughs> so I bought an RX-7, a Gen 3 RX-7 from a guy in Florida. I had to be in Florida for work. And I'm like, this is awesome. I'm going to drive up through the spine of the Appalachians home. This is going to be sweet. I'll find a car. I always wanted one of these. <laughs> it was an old guy, really old guy. And he had to think forever. And I thought, this is the best seller ever. You know, who's going to be more honest than, you know, some old guy who just wants to move on right. to somebody special. Pictures were totally grainy. Yeah. And he said, I can't really, you know, I can't really work on my, I, I don't know how to work this thing. 
And he's like, but man, it's a great car. I say you love it. I showed up at his driveway and the car was so sun faded and the plastic was so brittle and <laughs> everything was awful. And right. I had already agreed to buy it. So this is another one of those, Phil, where I'm such a gullible rube. I didn't just tell him to F off and leave. Right. I, I bought it. Right. And I drove it home and I, I really, well, you're, I actually you're, a man, be, you're a man of your word, man, but I, I will say, yeah, I that's mean, what I was. So I drove it home and I sold it on bring a trailer. I think I lost six grand, which wasn't <laughs> right. bad. Right. A lot of fun. It's a round of drinks. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, look, next time so, you're in the city, man, you could drive the Guara. You could tell me what you think. I mean, I, I, look, I'm not yeah. much of a, I'm not much of a, prof I don't, I'm, I'm not a particularly good driver. So you, I think you're probably a much better driver than me. So you may drive and go, this is terrible, but I really enjoy it. Well, that's okay. That's an interesting point. I think it's, it's, um, I don't think there is one formula for what somebody enjoys to drive a car. And like what I like out of a car, or what you like could be totally different. I bet I, they're closer than you think. I like, uh, I don't care about top speed. I don't, I have no interest no. in massive horsepower. It's just, it's, just, it's ridiculous. Uh, I like acceleration and I like the, I like steering and kind of just like a good chassis, the way it handles the shitty roads. Uh, yeah, yeah, and the yeah. Ditto Masso does all that stuff, man. It's just, it's cool. Yeah. We used to call it like, there's two things I always thought were super important to a car was, uh, it's, it's, it's very esoteric. It's called feel. And I always yeah. say like, can, can, can I mind picture what's happening at the contact patch at the tire? Yes or no. Right. And then the other thing was like linearity. Like if I break the, if I put 10% more brake, do I get 10% more slow? And that sort of predict predictability is what I found always is like, okay, this is a car I feel really comfortable and confident in. And therefore I like it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've had a lot of cars that did not give me confidence. The Stratos always <laughs> filled me with terror. Why was that car so bad? It wasn't like super horsepower though. Right? No, actually it wasn't. You know what? It wasn't so bad. It was just very, it was, it was like driving around in the paper bag. So, you know, like I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd sneeze in the highway and I'd have crossed three lines of track, three lanes. Like without like, oh, I, I guess I'm in, the, I'm on the, on the right lane now. Like it was just so, it was very twitchy. Um, and it was such a short wheelbase. Uh, you know, like but you didn't always, it have a pocket for your helmet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the uh, yeah, the uh, door pocket was shaped so you could put. So it was, it, cool. I mean, I loved owning that thing. I really loved owning it. Uh, What's well, the car <clears throat> you sold, Phil? That you wish you hadn't. Well, the O three seven, but I got back. Okay, you bought it back. Is it the exact same one or is it different? No, it's the same one. It's my old How car. Okay. I, okay. What? Because I was talking to the, I was talking to my friend Alex. I sold it to. We kept in touch, and he's really getting into seventies uh, Formula One cars. Oh, driving them on the track. And he said, yeah. "Look, after after I've been driving these things, he said he said to me, the 037 is the best car I've ever driven. But after driving seventies Formula One cars, everything else is just kind of it just it just doesn't really it doesn't give you the same thrill, you know. It's Might as well pick up. Yeah, exactly." So he yeah. said, I think I'm going to sell everything. And then as a joke, I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll buy back the 037. He said, okay. And then, I was, and then I thought, oh, shit, now I have to figure out how to pay for it. I mean, he was very kind and, and generous in, in the, with the agreement we had. Um, and I got it. I Actually, I drove it yesterday for the first time because I finally got plates for it. And, no way. Oh, it was, what was it like? It was so good, man. It's just Really? Yeah, it's just like this kind of semi-drunk, like like hooligan who likes to have a laugh uh it's 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 so raw and like the sound the acceler it's just oh it's glorious man and this is the launcher that they made into the rally car that beat everything right well the 037 was the last rear wheel drive car to win the world rally championship uh in the okay. early 80s before like the quattro the t16 yep. the s4 took over um uh I mean, in my opinion, it's probably the most beautiful of the Group B cars, but that's a low bar because they're, they're all... Uh, a, well, tell us, this is mid-engine, right? Mid-engine, uh, supercharged. It's probably like 250, 260 horsepower. <laughs> it's not very much. Um, but the car, the, the thing I loved about the car I bought was when I got it from Italy, it came with a, a Group B rear clip. Um, it came with all these extra parts, spare parts. So it came with a Group B rear clip, which was mounted on the car. That's made of carbon Kevlar. So wow. it's, super, it's super light. And it came with the original Stradale clip, which is really heavy. So the cars are probably a couple of hundred pounds lighter. Um, wow. 
And it's just, ah, oh man, it's just, you'll have to drive it. It's so. It's such a cool era. Yeah. And right. It's such Cause a that's great... the era they had to make 500 street cars so that they could rally them. Right. Yeah. They, well, they made 200 of the 037. 200. Okay. Uh, I mean, it, the numbers varied. The Stratos was 400. Um, there was generally like in the 200s. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a really great car. It's, it's small. Uh, the dash is lined with neoprene for some, <laughs> for some weird reason. Like I guess, a wet suit. Yeah. Like, I guess if you shit your <laughs> pants, if you have an explosive bowel <laughs> movement, like you could just hose it down or something. <laughs> It's just, oh, it's, yeah. just it, it's just glorious, man. And, and also, I, so I, Phil, I, in those moments, do you take a moment and just like I always do the uh, I have all these moments where I, the the Talking Heads song flashes in my head. This must be the place. No, how did I get here? Oh, <laughs> no. I mean, I well, I I mean, when I'm when I'm driving like that, I, it occurs to me sometimes how uh, yeah. lucky I am, man, just to be in these things. Um, and and you know and it's it's true i mean that's the thing i think that that driving that's so glorious about driving anything you love is that it gives you instant amnesia like you don't you forget ev about everything that may be bothering you and 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 you're just mm. you're just the car and the sound and the road and the and the and the and the, and the you know physical forces and mm. you just that's and you are just you are just right there you're nowhere else but in that seat and that's what mm. the 037 does that. Mm. I tell you, I, what's in my head, I know you live in the city. Your commitment to these weird cars and the spare parts and the city is impressive. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I'm, clear, I'm, a, I'm a sucker. That's how I do it, man. You need to come out to Michigan and we're going to buy you 10 acres with three pole barns and then you can have all your stuff you want. <laughs> I'm in, man. I'm in. <laughs> Let me know when the next drive is. I'll come out with the, I'll come out with the Guara. All right. All right. All right, man. Well, look, it's, it's been a, such a, it's been a real joy having you on, man. Uh, uh, it's been a joy being here. Like I said, I really has been looking forward to it. I love talking to you and likewise, love all the man. stuff you do. So I can't thank you enough for doing it. Oh, of course, man. It was my pleasure. Take care. Thanks, Giza. Later, man. Bye-bye.